Michael Schumacher is the most successful driver in the history of Ferrari after winning five driver's titles with the team. But what if Michael Schumacher never joined Ferrari and just what would the implications be of that? The only way to find out is in this video. But first off, let's go through what happened in our timeline. So first off, Michael Schumacher in 1994 and 1995 won the driver's title with Benetton. But then he decided to join Ferrari in 1996 and as they say, the rest is history. So what if Michael Schumacher never joined Ferrari? Well, first off, he would have stayed at Benetton because Benetton were much better of an operation at the time compared to Ferrari and Benetton still in 1996 and 1997, I would say had a faster car compared to Ferrari. And these stats here kind of prove that because in 96 and 97 without Michael Schumacher, they still had one race win, two pole positions, 18 podiums and 135 points. And I think if Michael stayed at the team, they definitely would have produced a good enough car for Michael Schumacher to continue to win Drivers World Championships. Because if you compare Michael Schumacher to jean Alessi and Gerhard Berger, well, there's no comparison. Michael Schumacher was much better of a driver than Alessi and Berger. So I think in 96 and 97, Michael Schumacher would have won two more driver's titles. But after 98, it would have got a lot more difficult for Michael because the Benetton car was just getting worse and not better. And they were getting even further away from uh, winning races. As the best really they can manage was a few second place finishes with Giancarlo Fisichella, who again was nowhere near as good as Michael Schumacher. And this is what Benetton did between 1998 and 2001. They had no race wins, one pole position, seven podiums and 79 points. Now even though Michael Schumacher would have done a lot better at Benetton between 1998 and 2001, the Benetton car was really bad, especially in 2001. I don't think Michael would have won the championship between those years. So instead of Michael Schumacher winning the title in 2000 and 2001, I think Mika Hakkinen would have won the title in 2000 and then David Coulthard in 2001. As McLaren, I think, would have been a lot more dominant. The car was just way too slow and the team was also falling apart and was soon to become the Renault Works team in 2002 and I think Michael Schumacher would have left for McLaren for 2002. I don't know why I just can't see Michael Schumacher ever driving for a Renault Works team, it just doesn't really make any sense to me. So in my opinion, Michael Schumacher would have joined McLaren in 2002 and would have raced with McLaren until probably 2006. And yes, I do think he would have retired at the same time he did in our timeline because I don't think Michael had enough left in the tank. And I think Michael at McLaren would have won a couple of world championships because despite the McLaren car not being the best, it was good enough in 2003 and 2005 to, you know, contend for the world championship. And with Michael Schumacher in that car and with the whole team built around him, I think Michael would have been winning the 2003 and 2005 driver's titles. But I don't think Michael Schumacher would have won the title in 2002 and 2004 like he did in our timeline. So in 2002, I think it would have been Juan Pablo Montoya. And then in 2004, I'm going to go for Jensen Button. But again, I think he would have called it quits at the end of 2006 because I think he just lost the motivation to drive Formula One cars. But more importantly, what would have been the effects on the Scuderia Ferrari team? With again Michael Schumacher in our timeline being the most successful driver in the Scuderia's history. And these stats right here between 1996 and 2006, which is when Michael Schumacher was driving for the team. This is what they did with Michael during that time. So they had 87 race wins, not just of Michael Schumacher, but also Eddie Irvine and Rubens Barrichello and also Felipe Massa. They also have 71 pole positions, 203 podiums and over 1,000 points. And in that 10 year period, Ferrari were the best team in F1. There's no real doubt about it. I know that Williams won championships and McLaren and Renault did. But Ferrari at times, especially in 2002, 2004 and probably 2001, were just unstoppable. They were a machine and one of the most successful teams in the history of the sport. But if you take away everything that Michael Schumacher did for Ferrari, 
then this is how it looks and just look at how little race wins and pole positions for example they have compared to where Michael Schumacher was in our timeline driving for Ferrari. And I just don't see how they would have won a championship in that time without Michael Schumacher. As there were so many races where Michael Schumacher got so much out of the car it was unbelievable. And I don't think other drivers out there would have been able to get what he got out of the car. So in those 10 years without Michael Schumacher I don't see how Ferrari win a driver's or constructor's title. I just don't see it at all. But now let's get on to how this affects all of the other drivers in this time again if Michael never went to Ferrari. First off I think Alessi and Berger would have remained at the team because I think Ferrari did quite like them. But Berger would have retired probably the end of 97 as a Ferrari driver. Alexander Wurtz most likely would have never drove for Benetton because I don't think he would have been accepted by Michael Schumacher as his number two and Giancarlo Fisichella I think would have been Michael's number two driver at Benetton because Michael Schumacher was very picky over who his teammate was. And I don't think he would have gone for Wurtz. But of course if Michael went to McLaren in 2002 what would have happened to Kimi Raikkonen? who in our timeline left Sauber in 2001 and went to McLaren in 2002. I think instead of him going to McLaren, Kimi Raikkonen would have gone to Ferrari. Because at this point, Ferrari would most likely be looking for the next superstar in the sport. And in 2001, Kimi Raikkonen was so impressive in that Sauber, so I think Kimi would have gone to Ferrari in 2002 and not 2007. With Michael being at McLaren until 2006 though, I think that kind of guarantees that Juan Pablo Montoya would have never joined the team. As Michael Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya absolutely hated each other, I don't see how these two could have coexisted in one team. It would have been the most toxic teammate atmosphere I think we've probably ever had in a team. Even more so than Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost, it would have been so, so bad. So instead, in my opinion, David Coulthard would remain at McLaren until 2006, also with Michael Schumacher. Now, I know also David Coulthard and Michael Schumacher did not get on so well, as they did have a few crashes and a bit of controversy. For example, Spa 1998, where they almost had a fight. But I think because Coulthard was such a solid number two for Mika Hakkinen, he would have played the same role for Michael Schumacher, and would have benefited in having a good enough car to win races. In the alternate timeline, Rubens Barrichello joins Ferrari a bit earlier in 1998, not 2000. The reason is, is because Ferrari were actually interested in Barrichello as early as 1995. So I think he would have joined in 1998, but eventually would have to play the number two role to Kimi Raikkonen, just like he did for Michael Schumacher during the same time. Barrichello just wasn't good enough to lead a team like Ferrari, it's as simple as that. I think Jean Alesi would have remained at Ferrari probably until the end of 1999 but then retired from the sport and gone out on a high as a Ferrari driver just like Gerhard Berger. Giancarlo Fisichella in my opinion would have got his move to Ferrari a lot earlier than he did in our timeline in 2009. By the way I think Fisichella would have replaced Alesi at Ferrari. But it would have been mostly a failure and he would have been kicked out for Kimi Raikkonen at the end of 2001. And in this alternate timeline, Giancarlo Fisichella struggles around in the midfield at teams like Sauber. But I still think Kimi Raikkonen would have won the driver's title in 2007 because Kimi Raikkonen was very, very good at developing a car and I think would have been able to develop Ferrari, kind of like Michael Schumacher did, but just not as much. As Ferrari, you would think by 2007 would get their act together and start challenging for world championships. So I think Kimi Raikkonen in 2007 would have still won the title. But they just would have had to have waited a bit longer for their first drivers and constructors title since the 70s and 80s respectively. But eventually I think they definitely would have got it because Ferrari eventually does rise back to the top of the sport. As that is what they normally tend to do. But that is the end of this what if scenario. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think in terms of this scenario and do you think this would happen? And what do you think would have happened if Michael Schumacher never joined Ferrari? It is an interesting question, as it definitely would have changed the landscape of the sport massively. And also, if you do have a what-if scenario you want to see me do in a video, make sure to comment down below a suggestion and I will note it down. But honestly, it's hard to imagine Michael Schumacher not driving a red Ferrari car. 
he was so synonymous with driving a Ferrari and being their number one and superstar driver. But there's no doubt that if Michael Schumacher never joined Ferrari, the history of F1 would be totally different. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back tomorrow with the next live podcast. And as well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and what do you think would have happened if Michael Schumacher never joined Ferrari and what are your what-if scenarios? Make sure to comment down below your scenarios. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.